Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing great as always. In today's video, you know, it's kind of a cool video for me. Um, we are actually going to be doing a test shooting and review of the new Hasselblad. Now, let me get this right. It's kind of a different name. It's the Hasselblad 907X 50C. So you might have seen this camera online in that. It's a new Hasselblad camera, medium format. It's a really neat, cool design, quite compact and small. Uh, you know, I reached out to my friends, my friends again, at uh, Hasselblad camera this time um, here in Tokyo. And they were kind enough to let me go down to the Hasselblad store in Harajuku and borrow the camera for a few hours and go around Harajuku and Shibuya and get do some test shooting. In this video, I'm going to kind of go through my first impressions, how I felt while I was shooting, and what I was going through, what it was like going through, you know, trying to edit um, images from a 50 megapixel camera on my seven-year-old vintage MacBook Pro. <laughs> uh, it's kind of old. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's the video. So check it out and I uh, hope you like it. Now, when I first went down to the Hasselblad shop, uh, the people there, you know, everyone there is really, really super nice. I've done a couple of workshops for them in the past. So they have a good working relationship with Hasselblad here. And, you know, my get the camera, my first impression is like, it's small. It's only about this big, really. The body of that is only this big. It has a lens on it. And it's quite small, really nice design. I really like the chrome on it and that. And it's built well. It's a little tiny tank. It's not any kind of like a plastic little cheap little camera. It's quite sturdy, quite rigid, and quite really, really well built, it seems. Uh, I really like the little flip out um, LCD screen that it has, that's a touch screen. And if you notice on the camera, there's basically no actual physical buttons on the camera other than the shutter and maybe one or more other button on the side here, but I didn't quite get around to using that. But basically, it's just a shutter. Everything else is on the LCD screen. And if you ever used Hasselblad, um, you'll know that the LCD screen is really nice. And the menu is really amazing. It's super intuitive. It's all pictures and touch and slide around. And I never once really got hung up on using the camera in that way on the LCD screen. So, you know, first off, I played around with the camera in the shop there. And within, I think like five minutes, I already knew how to use the camera. You know, it's a camera's a camera, really. But everything is so intuitive on that little LCD screen. It's really easy to use and really easy to pick up and just have fun with. Now, what's really unique about this camera is um, you'll notice that it's basically like a lens a little thin strip and then the sensor back with the LCD screen on it. And looking on the website and talking to the people at Hasselblad, that little strip is the body. So that's the body of the camera, which is really like, you know, half a centimeter thick. It's really kind of weird. And then the rest is the sensor, which is a 50 megapixel sensor, which is absolutely insane. It's so huge. And then, you know, your, your uh, lens on the front. And this time they allowed me to use an F4, I think it was a 45 millimeter uh, lens. Really nice lens, I really like using it, it's quite simple. It's a uh, fixed lens, so it's not, not, no zoom or anything like that. But the nice thing with this camera is it does have autofocus, which is really good. And the uh, the back touch screen on the back there, it's really easy to just push where you wanna have the, the autofocus and it goes right there. And it was good, and I'll talk about that in a minute as well. So now that I had talked to the people in the shop and I got used to the camera and they gave me a few little pointers here and there, um, I was meeting up with my friend Kazane and we headed off into Harajuku and Shibuya to get some shots and see what we could do. I was kind of planning on doing a mixture of action shots and portrait shots and something I always do anyways. And you know, I was really looking forward to shooting with Kazane because he's one of the best freestyle uh, football players here in Japan and he's just got such a unique style both in his fashion and his, his and his sport and how he performs and just how he thinks about what he's doing so it's, it was I was really looking forward to going out and shooting with them so you know there's a bunch of different things I noticed when I was using this camera uh, one of them was how you shoot with this camera is kind of a throwback to how you used to shoot with old style cameras where you look down into the camera and you can see the image and then you shoot that way talking to the people at Hasselblad they mentioned that the this camera's was specifically designed to be shot like that, hold it at the waist or at the hip, and look through the LCD screen and compose your shots like that. Like I said, a throwback to these old style cameras, and it's something that I think a lot of old Hasselblad users uh, or were really like to do, and so Hasselblad is kind of trying to bring those old users 
into the 21st century and into the digital age with this you know 50 megapixel back on the same kind of style of shooting. I never really shot like this personally before. I've never had a flip out back on one of my cameras, which I've always kind of wanted to have. It's always something I would really like to do shooting low. Um, so this kind of shooting was new to me, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, once I got used to framing the shot and moving the camera around and positioning myself in a way that I could easily get photos I wanted to, I actually really enjoyed shooting like this. And it was kind of a new challenge, a new way to be creative. And yeah, it was really actually quite interesting and challenging to, for me to be creative this way. Now, one thing that's really important when you're shooting like this is you have to use the LCD screen. Uh, if you notice on this camera, it doesn't have a, a traditional viewfinder like say my D5 or any other you know, Canon or Sony camera has. All in all, it's the LCD screen on the back of the camera that you're using to compose and shoot your images. So this is a really important part of the camera. It really needs to be bright, it needs to be vivid, and it needs to be sharp, and you need to know exactly what you're looking at at all times, outdoors, indoors, sunlight, cloudy, and all that. So saying that, I really enjoyed using this LCD screen. It was bright, very easy to view when we were out, outside. I had no problems using it to compose my images, even though I was kind of holding it a little bit far away from myself because I'm holding it down to my waist or my hips. It was still really easy to see, and I really had no problems using it. And again, like I mentioned before, it is a touch screen. So changing your settings on the fly with this camera, it was really easy. It's super intuitive. I was able to do it really quick. And I really had no, no trip ups through my shooting because of the LCD screen. It was really great. I really uh, didn't mind using it. And I was really quite impressed at how easy it was to use. Now, a nice thing with this camera, it's a medium format, 50 megapixel camera, like I said, but it also has autofocus, which for me is really nice because I've never really done manual focusing in any way, like maybe a little bit of video. Um, but with the kind of shooting I do with action sports and that, you don't really usually have time to manual focus. So I'm just not good at it. I don't have that skill set. I'm not like a manual focus kind of guy. So this autofocus was really helpful. And in general, about nine times out of 10, you know, 90, 95% of the time, the autofocus is bang on. I really had no problems with it. It was uh, capturing the, getting the focus on the face really well. It doesn't seem to have like a, like a face detecting autofocus on that does it on its own, but using the LCD screen and just pushing the, like poking the person in the face on the LCD screen, that'll be your auto, your autofocus point. And then you just autofocus. And uh, really the only point that I had a little bit of trouble with it was when you were shooting in this enclosed uh, space, a lot of mirrors around, and it was really bright from the background. So it was a very, very backlit shot. And Kazane didn't really have much contrast in the clothes he was wearing. So it was kind of hard for the camera to pick up a spot to, to autofocus. Um, we got it in the end and it was really no problem. Uh, there was just one or two shots that I was trying to line up and focus where it really wasn't quite working. It might've been my fault, I'm not sure. Um, but really with any camera, you're gonna find a couple parts where it's like you know, backlit, really bright and no contrast on clothes. It's kind of hard for a lot of cameras to get autofocus. So it really wasn't a big deal. And in general, every other time we were shooting, I really had no problems with it. It was really easy to use and the, it was really intuitive to just poke the screen, you know, poke a friend in the face put the autofocus there and just go. And it was a, uh, it's no problem at all. So now there are a couple unique things with this camera that I found when I was shooting that are a little bit different from the, my normal camera that I use. One would be that the max shutter speed for this camera is only 2000. Uh, so one 2000th of a second, which is a little slow compared to say like my D5, which I can get up to one 8000th of a second, which is kind of industry, industry standard now. Really not a problem, you know, stopping action is 2000 is fine. It's when, if you were using, say, a faster lens, like a 2.8 or 1.4, and you're out in the sun, and you know, even dropping down your ISO to 100, you might not be able to crack down that uh, the exposure properly. You might be kind of overexposing images and not being able to rely on a 1 8,000th of a second shutter speed to really, really drop that exposure down to where you want. So you might have to use a DN filter or something like that. I'm not sure really how like big the uh, Hasselblad lenses go, like if they even have a 1.4 or 2.8 or something like that. So like we were using a four, uh, F4 lens, so I really had no problem at all. And it wasn't the brightest day we were shooting, so one two thousandth of a second was completely no problem at all. But it is depending on how you're shooting and where you're shooting and what lens you're using, it might not be enough. But I think, you know, in general for street photography, model photography and things like that, uh, where it's really not a problem to crank down the aperture a bit more, it's, it's not an issue. It's just a thing with my style of shooting. I like shooting wide open. 
1.4 in that. A lot of times my D5, I have to shoot one eight thousandths of a second at ISO like negative three or two or whatever it's like, whatever it's called, just to bring down the exposure. So it could be an issue depending on the lens you're using, but at this time um, we were shooting that day, really no problem at all, it was really fine. And then to be completely honest, when I was shooting action, freestyle football, the peak of the action is literally like a split second. It's really, really on there. There's not many, there's some tricks and some moves where they can hold it for like a half a second. But a lot of things that they're jumping and the ball's flying in the air, you really only have like a split second to get that action, to get the perfect timing. With most cameras I've used, with my D5 and that, I push the button, the, 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 the shot's fired, and the, the image is created. Just the instant, I, the instant I hit that button, uh, there's no lag or whatever. So I really have my, my timing locked on that. With this camera, you know, it is a 50 meg megapixel camera. So there's a lot more information going in. And I find that, well, I found while we were shooting that I had to be one tempo early to really get the best timing for, for most of my shots. Things where he was kind of stopped for a second, um, things where he wasn't moving that much or where there's a flow to the move and I could pick a couple different spots in it was fine. But there's a couple shots where it was like, this is the exact point that I want. And if I tried to shoot that exact point, I'd get a, like a little micro lag. And in a sport like freestyle football, I micro lag really kind of kills the timing there. So it wasn't, it's not a game changer or like a game stopper for like, I wouldn't not use this camera because of this. Cause you know, you just have to get used to it. It took me like about an hour, a couple tries on a bunch of the tricks and nothing he was doing this time was super difficult. So it was easy to do a bunch. And I got used to it. And instead of going one, two, three, I would go one, two, three, and just push the button like one tempo before he would do the trick. And it was fine. I think this is something that happens with a lot of medium format cameras. I remember using the phase one. This was an issue with that as well. Uh, there's just so much information going onto that card and through the buffer and everything like that. It might take a sec. It just, it takes a sec. So um, just be aware of that. You know, this really, like I was using this for action. It's not really an action camera. Um, I don't think it's really intended to shoot these kind of split second moments in action. It's more of like a studio street slow shooting camera, but you know, just have it down here and it's nice and slow and you can take your time. But you always, you always want to push whatever equipment you're using and try something that it's really not intended for. And in the end, as soon as I got used to it and got my timing down, it was fine, not a big deal at all. So yeah, it didn't really make a big difference in the end. So yeah, so me and Kazane had a great time. We went all over, I think we found about four or five different spots. You can see, I've been showing some of the photos, I think. And uh, you know, we got some cool stuff. Um, I really had a lot of fun. In the end, you know, the camera was easy to use. Uh, it was fun. It wasn't like an obstacle that I had to fight with. Um, I did notice that, you know, I've been saying that the camera's designed to be shot from the hip. And you normally in that way, you would hold it flat to the ground, like horizontal to the ground. So you got the, the, the composition would be this most of the time. But when I was shooting portrait and things like that, um, I found that I really wanted to have the camera on the side. And then I would just, you know, just close the LCD, hold it up like you normally would if you're shooting with the live view and shoot that way. So, you know, you can do the traditional kind of shooting with it down in your hip. That's not a problem. It works great. It's quite a lot of fun. It's even really great when you want to put the camera really close to the ground, which is something I do a lot. And it's usually I'm having to lay on the ground to get all dirty and stuff like that. But with the LCD screen flipped up, it's really easy to do. And then if I wanted to shoot portrait or a higher, say, um, a higher angle with the camera, just close the LCD, shoot, shoot, and it's really not a big deal. It's really easy to just shoot any way you want with this camera. I really enjoyed shooting at the hip. It was a nice experience. But if that's not your thing, just close the LCD and shoot off the live view. And it's the same as what you normally do, say, if you shoot off a live view, which some people do. So it's really not that bad. Um, it's not locked in that. It's not like it's the only way you can shoot. So it's nice, it's nice that you can be flexible like that. I really enjoyed it. And there was some moments where I really just wanted to, you know, shut the LCD screen and shoot portrait. And we got some cool shots like that too. So it was good. So yeah, then we, um, you know, I did the shots. I took the camera back, unfortunately. I had to put it back in about, after about four or five hours. Um, but it was great. I really enjoyed shooting it. And then, you know, I went home and jumped on my computer and started editing the photos. Uh, I was shooting RAW and JPEG just because I had one of the backup JPEGs just in case my computer couldn't handle the RAWs. Because, you know, 50 megapixel RAWs are pretty big. I think it was getting into 
100 megabytes or more per raw, um, which is huge, it's massive. That's like three times more, three or four times more than my D5. So there's a lot of real estate on these images that you're getting. So I was a little bit worried about my old vintage seven year old MacBook Pro, uh, but it worked great, really no problem at all. Adobe has everything already updated for your, uh, for your Adobe editing software, Photoshop and all that stuff. So jumping on my computer and editing the images right away was super no problem at all. You know, one thing I noticed when I was on my editing software was like Photoshop and Bridge and that, was I was quite surprised at, um, unfortunately, what the images were looking like at first. And I think, you know, I was going through the images and just like, wow, this isn't maybe as sharp as I thought it'd be, or this isn't like as poppy as I thought it would be, even though I was editing kind of in that way. And I was a little bit, honestly, disappointed at first. Uh, and then what happened was I went, you know, after editing the images and throwing them in JPEG, and then I looked through on my larger screen on my computer, and lo and behold, I was actually really surprised. Um, the images looked much better after I put them out of the software into JPEG, and I could just look at them on my computer. Yeah, so, you know, if I open up one of these images that I have here and just take a look at it, like this is a shot I really like. We got this down the stairs of this overpass, and so I'll just open this up in Photoshop. And so, you know, looking at it, it looks great. We're at 25% right now, but if I really come into his eyes, say, now we're at 360%, and, you know, I can still see this, the individual stitching on his jacket, his eyes and everything, like, like really crisp. The hair here is super sharp and crisp. You know, like, the individual, geez, didn't notice this before, but I can see, like, the different texture of his clothes here is super detailed. It's super well shot. You know, like, this is almost 400%, and I can see things like this that are so clean and sharp still. Really quite amazing. So, like, I've never really shot, like, a, with a camera like this out in the street. Um, and just the options that you have now for post-shooting composition or, or cropping, if you need to, is just insane. Like, I hardly ever try to crop my images just because I want to keep the full image as best and best as big as I can. Um, but I really wouldn't worry about cropping the cropping like one of these images quite a bit because I'd still be able to use it no problem for everything I ever use it for. So I was really quite impressed. And like I said, I think there's just, um, like looking at it right now in Photoshop, it looks good. But when I was looking through Bridge and stuff like that, I think it was just the image was so big. Bridge wasn't really showing it in all its glory. And so I was at first kind of heartbroken and it's like, ah, this should be way better. Uh, but, you know, after looking at it in Photoshop and looking at it on my computer in a JPEG after it's been converted from RAW, um, you know, the images looked great, as just as good as I thought they would. So I was quite happy with that, to, to say the least. It was really, really good. Um, and, yeah, I wish my, my normal camera was this big <laughs> as far as megapixels. But I might need to do an upgrade soon. Yeah, so basically that's, um, you know, what I thought about the camera. Let me see this again, the uh, the Hasselblad 907X50C. Uh, so just, you know, a couple reminders or like review points here. You know, it is a 50 megapixel camera, so there are certain things that come with that. Uh, I didn't mention it yet, but you know, it only has a 2.7 frames per second for like a burst of images, which really is kind of, I don't, if it's that slow, I'm never gonna use it. Um, just do one shot, one kill. Um, another thing interesting with this camera, which um, I didn't notice before trying it, was it doesn't have a hot shoe on it. Um, I just kind of, you know, I wanted to bring down my flash and use my flash when I was doing it, my brown color, which I would normally put on the hot shoe, but this camera doesn't actually have a hot shoe. There is a little door you can open and hook a cable up to your uh, camera through the and to your transceiver. I didn't have the cable with me. I didn't bring it down because I'm stupid and I didn't actually notice or think that there wouldn't be a hot shoe on this camera. So. That was one thing I noticed, which was quite unique and different. Um, you can work around it, cable, a little strap on the camera and you're good to go. Yeah, and in general, you know, first time shooting like with at the hip, um, first time shooting like in the streets with a Hasselblad medium format camera, generally it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, this camera is, it's not cheap, it's expensive. Um, it's a huge megapixel camera. Um, so obviously it's not for everybody. You know, if you're just getting into photography, I really wouldn't recommend this camera. 
Um, but if you're someone who's been around like uh, myself for you know 20, 25 years, and you kind of want to try something different, and you want to actually start bumping up your megapixels because you're doing jobs and work that kind of would be really beneficial for having more resolution and better image quality, like I am doing these days, um, then it is something I do strongly think I'm going to consider in the future. But I would like to get up to like 45 megapixels or 50 megapixels um, just because it's not um, it's nothing more than the jobs I'm doing these days would benefit from it. And um, the style of shooting that I do for a lot of these jobs, say like a fashion brand um, or portraits for somebody and stuff like that, they're not hindered by the slow shooting style of this camera. You know, I don't need 14 frames per second to shoot a portrait or to shoot somebody uh, on the street, standing in the street in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I don't need that. What I do need is higher resolution, higher quality images, because those images now might go into magazines, onto posters, billboard, and things like that. So that's kind of the area where I am as a photographer. So camera like this, it is actually quite appealing to me uh, to use for work. And saying that, the compact size and uh, the mobility of this camera as well is also another feature that would be great for going out and shooting in the streets of Tokyo. If you're a street photographer, you know this, you don't wanna, you know, it's, it's not really beneficial to have the biggest camera, the biggest lens in the world, because people will see you, people would notice you, and they will not be natural if they see you shooting them with this camera. But if you just kind of nonchalantly have this little tiny Hasselblad, basically like a little brick camera with a small lens on it, you're quite incognito and you can do a little bit more uh, sneaky stuff, um, you, know, you know, all in the law, of course, uh, but you can do a little bit more street photography and fun shooting like that with this camera as well. So, you know, if I could get a few Hasselblad lenses and this body, I'd think about it for sure. Um, the images are huge. The shooting was fun. The LCD screen is super easy to use. So there's no buttons on the camera really, but everything's on the screen and it's great touch screen, super intuitive. All in all, I really enjoyed shooting this camera and I would like the opportunity to try using it again. Uh, maybe next time bring in a cable for my flash and to see what we could do maybe like in a bit more of a studio setting or with a flash out in the streets and see what kind of crazy high quality images I could get. So yeah, that's the video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions or comments of uh, what I've said about the camera, that'd be awesome. Let me know. Maybe you have different feelings about it. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know, it's a camera that really kind of, uh, I would say, divides people almost to just the style and uh, what it does and it's so unique and different. So if you have a different opinion, let me know. I would love to hear from it and we can comment in the uh, down below in the comment section. And always, you know, like, subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, thanks and I'll talk to you soon.